Got another question on the periodicity topic, and as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so for part A, we've got to draw this label diagram to show the structure and bonding in lithium. So we've got to draw a lattice of Li1 plus ions. I always do uh, three rows of three and then just offset the middle row. So we label up the Li1 plus ions as a lattice of lithium ions and then just dot some electrons in the spaces and label those up as delocalized electrons. So why has it got a high boiling point? It, a large amount of energy is needed to overcome the strong electrostatic attraction between the lithium one plus ions and these delocalized electrons. Part B now, so a really simple um, dot and cross diagram for the diatomic F2 molecule. Just make sure you've got the right number of electrons, so seven in each outer shell. Why has fluorine got a low boiling point? So we need to talk about the type of structure it forms. It's a simple covalent or molecular structure. So only a small amount of energy is needed to break the weak induced dipole forces between the F2 molecules. So this little diagram here is just to help explain that. When you boil in simple covalent structures, you're not breaking the bonds. That's what you're doing in um, giant covalent structures. All we're doing is overcoming these forces of attraction between the molecules. And in the case of fluorine, they are induced dipole forces. You could say London forces there if you wanted to. Part C now, so a dot and cross diagram for lithium fluoride. So you can either draw a shell of two. Obviously it's lost its one outer electron to get that positive charge. So you can do what I've done and put two electrons, that, that would be the inner shell. Or you can just have no electrons at all and just leave that blank. Um, so that's how you represent the lithium ion and the fluoride ion. Because I've used crosses for the lithium, I would need one cross and then seven dots. Obviously a one minus charge for that. Why does lithium fluoride conduct electricity when molten but not when solid? So it's all to do with the um, mobility of the ions, not the electrons, the ions. So when it's molten, the ions can move, but when it's a solid, the ions, they're held in the lattice, so they can't move. Part D, fluorine reacts with boron to form the fluoride BF3, so we've got to come up with the equation. So obviously it's boron plus the diatomic fluorine to make BF3 and it balances like that. For any shapes of molecule question, I would always suggest that you draw um, a dot and cross diagram so you can clearly see how many um, electron regions you've got in the valence shell. So this is trigonal planar shape. Its angle, the bond angle is 120 degrees and that's because we've got three bonding regions all repelling each other equally. Part E now, so explain why the NF3 molecule has a permanent dipole. So the first thing is we're gonna say why the dipole exists in the bond. So that's due to the fact that fluorine is more electronegative than nitrogen. So you could draw up a, a, the bond and put the dipole on if you wanted to. And then we need to say that the dipole basically doesn't cancel out. And that's because the molecule itself, the NF3 molecule, isn't symmetrical. This is where the diagram's helpful because you can see you've got a lone pair on the nitrogen because it's got five valence electrons rather than the three for boron. So the NF3 molecule is not symmetrical and therefore the dipoles can't cancel. And finally, describe and explain the trend in atomic radii of the element lithium to fluorine across period two. So the atomic radius decreases as you go across the period that's down to the fact that you're putting an extra proton in the nucleus, but you've got the same amount of shielding. And so therefore, there's a greater nuclear attraction for the outer electrons.